Hi there guys, what is going on? How are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how you can create this bitmap image effect on your images and your typography. So I'll show you now here an image before and after with the effect applied, and then again with some typography here before and after. So as you can see, it creates this really nice sort of color halftone effect. And yeah, it's really interesting and when used correctly, it can be really effective. So today I'm gonna to be running you through the process on how I achieve this. And uh, yeah, hopefully teaching you guys something new or showing you a process you haven't done before. And yeah, all good. Also, we've got a nice and bright video today. You know, it's scary out there at the moment, all corona ting. So yeah, first time I've opened my blinds in five months. But other than that, grab yourself a little brew and uh, yeah, let's crack on with today's tutorial. Before I start in file, I'm going to sort of just mock up like a little City Soda Club album cover or something just as an example. So I'm literally going to do it as just a 1080 by 1080. For the resolution, we're going to keep this as 200. RGB colour is absolutely fine. Let's create a document. Cool, so we've got our document open here. We need an image. We need what we're going to apply this to. So I'm going to start off by showing you how this really affects an image. Then after that, I can show you how you can sort of incorporate this within some typography and add this effect within some type and make it look really nice and cool. So, so what you need to do is just grab an image or whatever you're gonna apply in here, it might be a graphic, it might be something that you've created, but just grab your image and make sure it's in your Photoshop file. You can just import it or paste it in, whatever. So as you can see, I've dropped in this image of some sort of samurai armor, which I thought was a really interesting photo. It's really detailed and there's a lot of different tones in there, like subtle color tones, which you will see how this sort of works with the bitmap effect. And there's some darker areas and lighter areas. So I thought this would be a perfect example to use. I really want to use this image, but this background, it does have a bit of like gradient in it, but I'm gonna remove that background. I kind of want there to be maybe a circle gradient coming coming out, like almost like a, a sun or something coming out the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the image and then add this sort of gradient radial shape in the background. I think what you're gonna see is this effect really comes through when there's gradients involved because it basically collects pixels together to create a denser area where there's a dark color, then it's you know more spread out when there's a where there's a lighter area. So in these sort of mid-tone ranges, you're gonna find loads of this nice detail. That's the sort of thing we wanna show. We want as much of that as possible because I think that's probably the most interesting part and when it looks its best, really. Cool, so this is my base image. As you can see there, there's the gradients in the background. There's a lot of detail going on here and we would now wanna convert this to a bitmap image. But it won't let you do that straight away. So if you go to image mode and bitmap, it's grayed out. You're not going to be able to do it. And that's because it can only really apply this from when this is a black and white image and a grayscale image. So we need to convert this to grayscale and it's going to ask you to merge these layers. At this stage, I would save this as a file and keep a reserve file there just in case you want to go back and make changes. We're just going to go for it. We're going to merge. And now if we go back to image mode, you'll see that bitmap is now available as an option. So we can click on that and it'll ask you to flatten your layers. So just press OK. And now this uh, little dialog box is going to pop up basically. So it's got your little resolution here. It's going to tell you what it was when you input it at the start when you created the document which was 200 and we're going to want to make sure that this is outputted at half that we want to lose some resolution on this and we want to make sure that that effect is coming through strong and then here at the method we're going to want to use halftone screens once you've uh, got these settings just press ok so as you can see this halftone screen dialog box has popped up we're going to keep the frequency at 100 to match what our new resolution was and the angle i'm going to keep at 45 degrees and in terms of shape we're going to set this to cross press ok and here we have it here we have have our bitmap image now from far away it's going to look detailed but the more you zoom in you're going to be able to see more of this sort of bitmap effect and how it's sort of working you can see these little crosses here and you can now see how this image has been transformed into just basically pixels black and white on and off pixels to create your image and you can see round the back here where i formed that radial gradient coming out you can see how nicely these gradients have now been transformed and you can see the black, it's sort of the grayer areas and then gradually to the whites. And you can still see the overall design really nicely. And a lot of this detail is still within there, which is really, really nice. I'm really liking how this is looking. And uh, it's really interesting. You've completely transformed your image into something interesting. So whilst this is a bitmap image, so as you can see up here in the mode, bitmap, it's still in that bitmap image. You can't actually do anything to it. You can't unlock the file. And you can't really apply anything over the top. You can't edit it. So how do we then go on to edit this? Change the colors? Like how? how do I have a bit more control? If we go back to image mode and grayscale, we have to convert it back to grayscale to then go image mode RGB. So this is gonna be for digital, so RGB is cool. So now we've converted it back to RGB. But you have to convert it back to grayscale to then convert it to RGB. You can't just jump from bitmap to RGB basically. So now we're in this RGB setting, we can undo this. 
and uh, we can edit our file. So if you just wanted to add a simple color overlay, just a two color overlay, you can create a gradient map and make sure that the darks are on the darks and light on the light, like so. And you can feel free to change any of these colors to create your desired effect or desired color scheme. Or what you can do is go to select color range, make sure you've got the highlights selected and the fuzziness and range is low, press OK and you can actually mask out all of the highlights. If we now invert this, we can now add a color background. I'm just gonna add like a digital green and drag that to the back. So now we have our top layer and our back layer and we can change it as much as you want. If you wanted to change this, you can just right click blending options and add a color overlay over the top and change that to whatever you want. Uh, and basically, yeah, change either of the colors here to create a nice, cool, little interesting design. So for the second part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this effect and how it really works. And it's quite effective on type and typography and how you can create this old game vibe on your on your text. And it's really, really cool, you'll see in a bit. But for this, I'm gonna work in Illustrator. I recommend you do too for anything type-based or when you're creating little graphics or logos, or anything like that. But feel free to make this as well in Photoshop if you prefer to work that way. So I'm just gonna create a little city soda club and I want a nice bold typeface so probably just going to go for the standard obvious choice which is Druk which is always just it's just there it's just there when you need it you know so we know from previously doing this on an image that when we have a nice gradient you see this bitmap effect in in full force it looks really good when it has a nice gradual gradient so we're going to want to achieve the same thing but on our text I've outlined it so that I can now apply the gradient over the top I'm going to want this coming from the bottom rather than from the side of each shape but I do want this to be on each individual shape not just one over the top again for you you do whatever you want whatever works well for you but I want this coming dark from the bottom uh, and then light to the top. On its own, it's gonna look a little bit difficult, so we can highlight this, go to Object, Path, Offset Path, and I'm gonna keep this as just three and press OK. At the moment, because it's selected, it's gonna add the gradient as well, but we can just add this as a solid black color. Now, as you can see, it's add the offset path to each individual letter, which means there's an overlay on a lot of these letters and you're losing a lot of this text. So to fix this, what we can do is just double click into the shape, like so, so you're working within this shape. Click on your gradient layer and then go select, same fill color, and what this will do will select all of those letters with the gradient fill and then you can press command shift and the right bracket to bring that to the top so you're bringing all those layers to the top leaving all the others in the background so here you can see you've got this nice gradient text here with a bold black outline now at this point if you want to be professional you want to be proper which i recommend you do just save this file out into your documents and then drag it into photoshop i'm just going to copy this and show you quickly how this effect works so same as before create another document to whatever size you want but you can just mimic whatever you previously did i'm going to go in grayscale because it's already black and white and then i'm going to paste my design on top we can now go to image mode bitmap and it's created our bitmap image and as you can see now it's created this old school game vibe like it's really cool it's added all those gradients here and you can see all these pixels on and off and sort of 50 percent there to create this like it looks like an old school race game or you know like street fighter sort of vibes so again we can image mode convert back to grayscale and then image mode back to rgb color we can then unlock with this because it's sort of isolated you can actually just use the magic wand tool to click on the background and it'll also select all the white in there or you can go back to your select color range and select highlights again and just mask it out so you could export this is its own little graphic your own little logo and again you can change the colors of any of these and create a nice little orange background change this color like so so that's really it for the two different styles there how you can implement this on your artwork and your imagery and how you can also use this in type to sort of add a bit more personality and character to your typography and uh, your logos and your graphics i think it's really cool and i think when used properly it's really powerful and it works really well so hopefully you've found this very interesting and learned a little something new here and if you have give it a little thumbs up it does help make sure you subscribe for all the future videos because i've got loads of this stuff coming out different techniques and tools that you can implement in your own design process i'm going to be bringing out as much as possible but yeah thanks again for watching make sure you take care and i'll see you again very soon for a new video so yeah catch you in a bit it's cold now. <laughs>